All right, welcome to our tips number 10. And what we're covering today is pivoting data. This is a must know tidyverse feature. And this is a really awesome lesson that I use all the time, the functions that we go over in here. Um, so real quick, what we're gonna be making today is actually this visualization where we have to do some pivoting for, um, it's a vehicle class by auto manufacturer. And you can see the auto manufacturers here on the Y axis the vehicle class on the x-axis and then we can see in here we've got some summary values and this is the number of vehicles that these manufacturers are making that fall into these classes um, and this is a great way to visualize data uh, with a heat map um, is, which is what the, this is called okay so let's get started uh, first thing you need to do is uh, if you haven't done so already sign up for the business science uh, our tips newsletter this way you'll get these lessons every two weeks and you'll get the instructions to set up this github um, basically what you're going to do is set the github up you're going to do a git pull and what that'll do is if i go to my files tab if i uh, go to the, the base directory for the github repo you'll have this O10 tidyverse pivot. You just click that folder and open up this file here, O10 pivot, uh, tidyverse pivot. Um, once you have that open, it'll open up this, this file here. All we're gonna do is go down through and we can get started. So uh, first thing we're gonna do is load in the tidycoin and the tidyverse libraries. Uh, the next thing is we're gonna load in our MPG data set. And this is for auto manufacturers. You can see um, each row in this is a manufacturer and model of car. And it has different attributes about that model of car, um, such as displacement, number of cylinders, uh, the, the class uh, and the fuel mileage and so on. Um, so we're gonna be using this data. Uh, we're gonna be pivoting. The first thing we're going to do is show you how you can summarize this data by pivoting it wider. And this would be something that you'd want to do, like if you're getting it ready for a table, uh, to put it into like a PDF report. So uh, we're going to start with our MPG data set. We're first going to group by manufacturer. So we get 15 different groups and we have to summarize the data first before we pivot it. So we're going to count the um, the number of appearances that this combination of manufacturer and class occurs so for example audi and compact that combination occurs 15 times um, and that's how this works now this is considered long format um, and what we might want to do if we want to make a table is pivot it wider so that way we can see the manufacturer going down the rows and then the columns might be the class so we can do that with this pivot wider function and this is what we get now a 15 by 8 where we've got all of the summary data in here. And this is much easier for a person like you and me to be able to read in a report. Um, the, uh, the keys here, there's two, basically two um, arguments that you need to know. The names from, which is the column that you wanna pivot, and the values from, which are the values that you wanna fill in, inside those columns. So when you do that, um, you put names from and values from in here, and you select class and N respectively class goes over the columns and then the values that were in the end column go in here um, i also have an additional argument called values fill that's just to, um, because there's some missing there's no combinations of for example audi and pickup so uh, i want to fill that in with zero so i use this values fill um, and then the last thing i do is i ungroup and we'll save this as mpg pivot table one um, the next thing i'm going to show you we're going to talk about a a uh, function called pivot table, which is actually, if you're coming from Excel, it's a little bit more intuitive than having to group by count and then pivot wider. It just does all of that in one function and it comes from the tidyquant package. So here we have the MPG data set. And if we want to do, um, arrange it in this format, uh, what we can easily do is use columns, uh, and set the columns equal to manufacturer, uh, rows equal to the class. Uh, column and then uh, we can summarize the data using dot values equals n um, and this uh, performs a count an aggregation um, function that does a count so when I do this and we'll just run these lines um, you can see that we've got manufacturing class um, you can see that it's not in the right format it's got the manufacturer it's actually the opposite format than what we had uh, up here and to get it back into that correct format where I want the class as the columns, I just do this class and manufacturer. 
control enter and now it's been saved appropriately okay cool so we have it in the right format um, the next thing I want to show you is we can actually use this pivot table and this is kind of an advanced functionality but we can even do cooler stuff um, like for example capturing complex objects like a linear regression as a list so it has to be an aggregate which means uh, there's only one um, value that's returned but if you wrap a complex object that returns like you know a, a list um, you can you can wrap it in in this list and then you can store it so here i've just made class for each class i've de developed its own linear regression that is a function of the highway column the display uh, as a function of displacement and cylinder and then the negative one gets rid of the intercept um, so that's just an advanced functionality for any of the advanced users um, something cool that you can do to uh, create a bunch of linear regressions very quickly okay um, the next thing you can do, uh, you might have data that's in a data set that looks like this. You might have imported it from, you know, some sort of uh, Excel file or whatever, and um, it uh, comes in in this data set, and sometimes it's wide. Well, you can use this function called pivot longer, and the reason you want to do this uh, to make it a long format is that uh, visualizations um, are best performed, anything with ggplot. You pretty much have to, to use a long format so to get it in the correct format you're going to use this pivot longer function and uh, what we do is we just take these columns here uh, it has the calls argument and then there's names to and values to so I'm going to uh, put the uh, make the names to be this um, or the, uh, the I'm going to call it class and it's going to create a column called class and then the, the values that are in here I'm just going to create a column called values. So when I do this, what it does is it converts all of the names up here um, to the column class. So now I have all of my different combinations and um, the values that were in here, it places them in the correct spots over here. So it's just reshape that data. And the reason I want to do this is now I can create a ggplot. So we can make that heat map using uh, this long format. Um, which I've saved here. It's 105 by 3. Um, what I'm going to do is first start by creating a basic ggplot canvas uh, with the ggplot function. And we're going to have class on the x-axis. On the y-axis, we're going to have manufacture. And we're going to set up the fill uh, because it's going to be a heat map. It needs to use a fill. Um, and we're going to set that to the value column. So when I do control enter here, uh, you can see here it just makes a, a blank canvas and I've got class at the bottom. I've got manufacturer on the y-axis and I don't have any information in here quite yet. So we're going to next we're going to add what's called a geometry and uh, it's going to add a geom tile here which does our heat map. It's the base for our heat map uh, and you can see that the fill here is driven by this value column. Okay so next thing I want to do is I want to add some labels with the actual values. So what I do is I use geom label and I set the label equal to value. So it's just basically putting this value. So we're Audi and compact is 15. Um, we can see Audi compact 15. So it's just putting the, these labels on here. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is add a scale to give it some color. And now we've got the Brittus. So we've got the purple for zeros and then for large values, it's yellow uh, and it goes from purple to violet to, uh, green to yellow and then once it's yellow it's, it's a very large value so um, we're pretty much done uh, we can just add a theme here um, and, I, and uh, I could do something like theme dark uh, and then we can add a title here just to give it some aesthetics um, and uh, and yeah so there we go we've got our um, our, our basic ggplot with a heat map um, I'm going to change this back to theme minimal because uh, I don't really like this dark background back here it doesn't really lend a whole lot so to get rid of that um, now it's just the heat map that's showing all right that is uh, basic the basics of pivoting and hopefully you learned a lot uh, but there's a lot more to working with data uh, if you want to become a pro, pro data scientist and work um, there's a lot more to learn so check out my R for business course uh, there's no better course on the market that's going to get you up to speed faster than it. If you like this video, 
Don't forget to sign up for the Tuesday free R tips newsletter. You can just click this uh, link here and it'll send you here, put your email address in and every Tuesday you'll get these videos, you'll get the code and you'll get the tutorial right in your inbox.